our readings for this morning represent the reality of temptation and sin in our world, but also the power of God's grace to overcome sin and temptation. That's not just true for our readings this morning, it's true for all of the Bible. It's basically the story that keeps getting repeated over and over and over again. We see it right in the beginning. The Bible begins with God's creation, creating the heavens and the earth, and everything that God creates is good. But then sin enters in and tries to corrupt that creation. That's why after the creation of the world, the very next story is Adam and Eve, and Eve's fall into sin. Sin is any time we turn away from God and choose something else. And so Eve is tempted to choose this knowledge of good and evil as being more important than her relationship with God. And she falls into that sin. But sin is never private. It never is just affects us. Sin always affects the relationships around us. And so that sin of Eve immediately impacts her relationship with Adam as Adam, too, falls into sin. And that has a disastrous effect on their marriage, doesn't it? Where they start to hide from each other, be suspicious of each other, put on clothes, protect each other from each other. They start pointing fingers at each other. Well, it's her fault. Well, it's his fault. And as sin has impacted their marriage, it impacts the rest of their family. The very next story in the Bible is Cain kills Abel. Brother attacks and kills brother. The whole family now has been corrupted by sin. And because society is made up of families, that sin spreads into the rest of the community. And that's where we are today in the first reading, the story of Noah. It says that it's been ten generations from Adam to Noah. The book of Genesis says that now all of creation has been corrupted by sin. The world is filled with evil and with violence. God laments when the Lord God saw how great the wickedness of human beings was on earth and how every desire of their heart was always nothing but evil. The Lord regretted making human beings and his heart was grieved, for the earth was corrupt and full of lawlessness. God is not comfortable with sin. That's why he brings the flood to wash the earth clean of sin, begin creation anew. God does not want to tolerate sin in the life of his creation. And the point of those opening stories is to show us, too, my brothers and sisters, we cannot grow comfortable with sin either. It's not something we should tolerate in our lives. Sin offends God, and it should offend us, too. But we're weak, and there are all kinds of temptations around us. And so sin is a reality in our life. But that's why, my brothers and sisters, prayer must be a reality in our life, too, each and every single day. Because turning back to the Lord with our whole heart is the way we overcome sin and temptation. That's why Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. He teaches them the Our Father, a prayer that he wants on our lips each and every day to keep turning to God for his grace, for his love, for his mercy, for his strength. The prayer ends with, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, Jesus recognized sin, temptation, it's a daily reality that we have to face, we always struggle with. But God's grace is greater than sin and temptation. That's why he teaches us, turn to him every day. Keep looking to your Father who loves you to strengthen you, to help you to overcome sin in your life. God can free you from sin. He can give you the strength to overcome temptation. We see that in the gospel. 
Jesus is in the desert for 40 days, for 40 days being tempted by sin. But he never gives in because he keeps looking to the Father who loves him. He's vigilant throughout those 40 days of constantly turning to the Father in prayer. My brothers and sisters, we must learn to do the same. And that's why if you do only one thing this Lent, let it be to commit yourself to praying to God each and every day. Don't let a day go by where you don't open your heart to God in prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be long, and it doesn't have to be hard. It just has to be consistent and heartfelt. Make that your Lenten practice. God does not care about chocolates or dessert, I promise you, that has the power to save no one. But prayer does. Because prayer leads us into that life-giving relationship with the Father. May prayer your goal this Lent. Make time for him each and every day. And it will change your life for the better.